Good morning. Morning. Hello. Can you see me, guys? Good morning again. Good morning. Yeah, we can see you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, today is April 24th, and uh, I will continue our topic which was about inverse trigonometric functions if working with problems from, from your homework you experienced some problems because uh, let's say particular problems were confusing or complicated please do not hesitate to ask me for help and i will try to help you can you hear me well yeah yeah thank you so, Andrew, here, Tima, Lorraine, here, Aline, here, Juanita, Yuran, here, Gabriel, here, Divina. Divina, Chantal, yes, Chantal, yeah, yeah, I saw your name, I could not hear you, but I heard your voice, okay, okay, so, uh, Guangxi, here, Kyle, here, Matthew, I don't know why some people do not reply, even though I see their names, but I will check him like he is here because I saw his name. Okay. Julian? Here. Nathan? Here. Alejandro? Here. Okay. Let me show you the last problem which we had yesterday. This was a composition of two inverse to each other functions, but the value of x for pi over five was not in the range of the outside or so-called exterior function. So this is why the answer here was not equal to four pi over five as it was, for example, in the example number one. Do you have right now any questions which you like to ask me about? Guys, huh? yes, no, because I have no. No, okay. So let me show you another example where from the beginning we have negative answer for the question about having in the composition two inverse to each other functions. So we can name this as example number three. Example number three. And this is sine composed with <coughs> arc cosine of one half. Sine composed with arc cosine of one half. From the beginning, we have a negative reply again for the answer if these two functions in that composition were inverse to each other or not. So which means we cannot use that strategy, which we'll, let's say, used in example number two. 
let's see what can be done. I will show you two different methods for that particular problem. One method, number one, will be more like traditional way, which can be applied generally for any that type of problem. <coughs> Let's precisely look at this composition. Can I say that the exterior function here is a direct trigonometric function? Yes. Yes. And the interior function is our arcus, which is the inverse trigonometric function. Yes. Yeah. We already discussed that, and you learned that in the previous class, that the results of all direct trigonometric functions are numbers. In other words, direct trigonometric functions represent numbers, which are equal to the ratios of certain coordinates to each other, or certain coordinates to the radius, or radius to the certain coordinates, or just in the unit trigonometric circle, let's say cosine and sine of the angles equal to certain coordinates without, uh, um, let's say, uh, uh, in which we do not use radius. But, and we talked about inverse trigonometric functions. They are all arcuses, which means they are all angles. So, here in this composition, in other words, outside function represents a number which will be sign of the angle which we have inside of parentheses. Look what I'm going to do. Let me grab another piece of paper because I will not have enough space here. So look what I'm going to do here using that traditional approach. Arc cosine of one half, and I'm going to use one of letters of Greek alphabet. I am saying that let arc cosine of one half be alpha. You can see I'm using the interior piece in that composition, and I'm going to work with that piece. This is arc cosine. What is the range for that function? Is it the top half of the circle, which means quadrants one and two? Yes. Yes. What about positive one half? For which quadrant cosines, if we are, if we are talking about quadrant number uh, one and two, in which quadrant cosine will be positive? Is it in the is it the first quadrant? Yes. So which means alpha is the main angle from quadrant number one. If our alpha is that arcosine or one half, this alpha belongs to the first quadrant. So which means if you look at the original problem, I can rewrite this original problem in different form. I can write that this is actually sine of alpha. Can I? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Do I understand that? Our cosine of one half, which we have here in parentheses, is alpha. So now I can rewrite this like sine of alpha. So what is the meaning of that? It means that I have alpha and now I need to find sine of alpha knowing that alpha belongs to the first quadrant. Let's see what can be done. I'm going to use that equality where I have r cosine of one half equal to alpha, and I will apply as a composition cosine to both sides. So cosine composed with r cosine of one half will be equal to cosine alpha. Look at the left side. 
Is it a composition of two inverse to each other functions? Yes. Excellent. You answered yes, which is correct. That one half, which we have like x value, is it in the range for outside function, which is cosine? In other words, cosine, can it be equal to one half? Yes. Yes. Did you answer yes for both questions? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, which means the left side is actually equal to one half. So, and we have very simple value for cosine alpha. Now, what I have, I have location, I have a location for alpha, it is the first quadrant, and I know that cosine alpha is one half, and my goal is to find the value of sine alpha. Excellent. I'm going to use really very simple basic trigonometric formula like sine square alpha plus q sine square alpha equals to one. I'm going to replace q sine by its value, which is one half, and I will square it. So, and I'm getting sine square alpha plus one fourth equals to one. And I'm going to solve this equation for sine alpha. So I'm going to move one fourth to the other side, changing its sign, or you can subtract one fourth from both sides, one minus one fourth. And it will be sine squared of alpha equals to three fourth. And I need to take square root right now from both sides. But when we take square root, in general, we need to consider plus minus version of the answer. Or knowing the location, we can choose or plus or minus. And I'm going to do the second part. Alpha is from the first quadrant. And we know that in the first quadrant, all six trigonometric functions have positive values. So which means taking square root from both sides, I will be considering only positive answer. So it will be square root of three over two. Can I say that I am done with this problem? Did I find the sign of alpha value yes is it what we had for the original problem when we wrote this like it, it is original expression equals to sine of alpha right and you can see here sine of alpha yes this is the general very popular method to solve these particular problems. Doesn't matter if we have an original problem, such an attractive number like one half or other number, but if you have, instead of let's say such attractive numbers, one half like three, let's say fifth or one seventh or negative two nine, this is the only way to solve that problem, which I just demonstrated. But there is the second way to solve this problem. This why, please, right below that example number three, you can write first method. And now I will show the second method. In the second method, this method is not a universal method, but it is a very elegant and attractive method. When we have in our compositions such attractive numbers like one half, square root of two over two, or one, or zero, or negative one, 
or square root of three over two or square root of three over three, you probably understand what I just had listed because here I'm actually listed the values which we deal with and they are coming from the table of the values of trigonometric functions. And one half is one of that attractive values of x. Look how I'm going to solve this particular problem using that very elegant method, but which can be only applied to the limited number of that type of problems. I'm going to copy the same thing And now I'm asking myself the following question. Again, traditional one. Is it a composition? Yes. Yeah. Is it a composition of two inverse functions to each other? No. So the answer is not one half. But any time, as you should remember, working with compositions, we all the time start our simplification with the inside piece, with interior function. And after that, we move, move to more exterior functions because we can have not only two functions in the composition, we can have as two or many. It, it, we can have three functions in composition and 33 functions in composition, etc. But there all the time will be inside piece and many exterior functions and we all the time move from inside out like it is we can compare that if you are in the certain building and you are in one of rooms which is inside of other rooms to go out of this building you need to open many doors but the first door which you will be opening is that door of that small room which is inside 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 of other rooms and finally when you already go out you will be opening the most exterior door so so we are starting with this the most interior door and this is our cosine of one half is it the main angle according to its definition. Guys, I asked you a question. I'm asking about arc cosine of one half. Is it the main angle which can yeah. be from yeah. first or the second quadrant? Yeah. Which cosine is equal to positive one half? Yes. It is, yes. Yes. And I immediately start thinking, first of all, cosine is positive one half, so it can be angle only from the first quadrant. In the first quadrant, which angle has cosine equal to positive one half? Pi over three. Okay, I think I know, I have in my class here, only one person who perfectly knows these values. So, which means, I can simplify this to that form. So it will be sine of pi over three. And now I just need to recall the value of the sine of this angle pi over three. What is the value of that sine of pi over three? Definitely, you need to know that it is square root of three over two. And I am done with the problem. Do you understand why I called this method like very elegant for that particular problem? Yeah. yeah. But again if, again, if I had here instead of one half, let's say one fifth, one fourth, one third, negative two seventh, I could not use that second method. I could use only method number one. This why? Even though the second one is extremely elegant way to solve this problem, 
it is not a universal method, but number one is a universal method for that type of problem. Is it clear? Yeah. Yes. Can, yeah. I, move, can I move to another problem? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's say what is the example number? Example number four, right? So, another composition, cotangent, arc sine of negative one half. As you can see, this is again, not a composition of two inverse to each other functions. It is a composition but it is not simple form of composition when we are dealing with inverse to each other functions. What can I do? Do we have an arcus as a, here, as here in, I'm talking about arc sine of negative one half, which is the interior piece. Is it, arc, is it an arcus? Guys? The interior, yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about interior. So which means- Yes, it is. It is the angle. Let's say I do not want to use alpha anymore. I like to use another letter. But for angles, we traditionally use letters of Latin alphabet. You can use alpha, beta, gamma, delta, theta. Which one do you want to use? Theta. I could not hear. Theta. Beta. Okay. In this case, please write let arc sine of negative one half be theta. And in this case, I'm rewriting my original problem in different form. So it is theta. You can see theta equals to arc sine of negative one half. What is the range of arc sine? Which part of which half of the circle? Top or right half? We talked about that yesterday. Do you need my help? Guys, I am confused. You yes, are. Yes, we know. I heard yes and no. Can you be more specific? Again, my question was: What half? What kind of half of the circle we are using as a range for our cosine? The top half or the right half? Top. No. We are using the top for our cosine. This time it is a right half. Guys, at least please review what we cover. Again, it is not a new material. So, so which means uh, the range consists of two quadrants, number one and number four, including endpoints. But if under symbol of our cosine, we have a negative number like negative one half, it means that this theta belongs to the fourth quadrant. Theta belongs to the fourth quadrant. And now I know that it is from the fourth quadrant. I know that my original problem now looks as cotangent theta. So basically I need to find the value of cotangent theta, which will be my answer for this problem. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use that actually equality, which states that theta is equal to arc cosine of negative one half. I'm going to apply sine come as the exterior function because I'm going to use a composition. I am using a composition and I'm using direct sine because I dealt with arc cosine. So you can see 
I applied sine as a composition to that both sides of previous equality. And now I see a composition of two inverse to each other functions. Negative one half is in the range of outside function sine this y. The left side is actually negative one half. Negative one half is equal to sine theta. So this is what I have. So, but I need to find cotangent. And to find cotangent, I can use the formula where cotangent is equal to the ratio of cosine of theta to sine of theta. And I know the value of sine theta, but I need to find cosine theta value. Cosine theta value I can find using so-called Pythagorean trigonometric identity, which is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals to one, replacing sine by one half and squaring that square of negative one half is one fourth plus cosine squared theta equals to one. And please solve it for cosine squared theta. And you are getting cosine squared theta equals to three fourth. Cosine squared theta equals to three fourth. Did you write it down? Yes. Now, again, in the same way as I did before, I'm going to take square root from both sides. I remember that theta was from the fourth quadrant. I remember that in the fourth quadrant, all angles have cosine equal to the positive number. This is why I'm going to use positive sign. So, and it will be square root of three over two. Cosine is equal to square root of two, three over two. And now, finally, I am ready to find the value of cotangent. I'm writing down the formula to show my intention. Cotangent theta equals to cosine theta over sine theta. And I'm going to plug their values. On the top, it is square root of three over two. On the bottom, it is one half. It is square root of three over two times two over one. And my answer here, there is negative one half. So the answer will be negative square root of three. Negative square root of three. And this is my answer for this particular problem. You will be having, uh, very soon, you will be having a test for trigonometric material, which we reviewed. And I really encourage everyone to be very serious about reviewing all these values and formulas. I really deeply, deeply recommend you to do that. So. Do you have questions about problems which we just solved? No. No. Okay, can I continue? Yeah. Example number five. If you compare all these uh, examples, like example number, Three, example number four, example number five. Let me see what I'm talking about. Yeah, number three, four, and, uh, uh, and 
in number three, I show two different ways. These are specific type of compositions. The interior piece was represented by inverse trigonometric function. Exterior piece was a direct trigonometric function. But our uh, compositions come, can come in, in the switched form as well. Let's see, we have the following composition where right now the outside piece is inverse function and inside piece is our direct function. This is also a composition. And now let's talk. This time inside piece, which is an interior function, cannot be an angle. It is a number. Excuse me, one second, please. Let me actually show you another one. I really apologize. I will change that. I will change that. I like to show a little bit easier example. One sec. I hope you can read what I wrote. So can you switch to another now? Just do it easier. Um, arc tangent composed with tangent of pi over four. Can I see I wrote that word number? Yes. And now I'm going to ask myself the same questions which I asked today. Is it a composition? Yes. Yeah. Is it a composition of two inverse to each other functions? Yeah. Yes. Is pi over four, which is actually an angle from the first quadrant, is in the range of the outside function? Yes. Did yes. you answer yes to, to all these questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. What would be the answer? Just pi over four. Pi over four. Definitely, it will be pi over four. What if you have example number six and situation is not so clear and easy? Let's say we again have arctangent and we have arctangent composed with let's say cotangent or it can be any other function i just choose this one it is quite similar type of composition why similar because outside function is arcus it is an inverse trigonometric function. Inside piece is a direct trigonometric function. But they are at the same time, they are absolutely different. Is it a composition? Yes. Yes. Is it a composition of inverse to each other function? Yes. Wait, no, 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 no. no. Tangent and cotangent? Are they inverse to each other? They are not, because they are functions absolutely different, no connection here. It is arc tangent, inverse for that should be tangent. Or if we had inside cotangent, outside we should have arc cotangent to say yes, that they are inverse to each other. Do you understand that? So yeah. the answer is no. And this why I'm not going even to think if two pi over three is in the range of arc tangent or not, because I already answered no for the first question. So which means I need to do something right now with that inside piece. And that inside piece, is it a number? Yes? Yes. So, which means, please don't use Greek's letter for this inside piece. You can use any letter of Latin alphabet. 
Are you okay with, let's say, letter A? Yes. Yeah. So, or just use your initials, any letter, because nobody can force you to use that letter or the other letter against your will. So cotangent to pi over three is, let's say, is A. And I'm going right now to simplify this piece. I will be working with that cotangent of two pi over three absolutely in that way as we worked in previous actually sections and uh, chapters as well when we were covering um, trigonometric material and we solved uh, problems in which we were asked to find the values of certain trigonometric, trigonometric functions for given angles. Okay, so A equals cotangent of 2 pi over 3. Can I, instead of 2 pi, write 3 pi minus 1 pi? Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you a question. Yes. What was? Can I write that this cotangent of two pi over three can be written like cotangent of three pi minus pi over three? Yes. Yes. Why did I do that? Oh, because that uh, downstairs I have three. This is why I used multiple of three. Uh, for and this how I got three pi, but I need to get two pi. So this why it is three pi minus pi. We did it so many times previously. Now, three pi over three is it just pi? Yeah. Is it now cotangent of pi minus pi over three? Yes. Yes. And you know what now? You can use different ways. First, you can use the information about cotangent being pi periodic. You can drop this pi, and after that, negative pi over three will be left. And after that, you need another property that cotangent is one of odd functions. You need to take this minus and carry this to the front. So it will be minus cotangent of pi over three. And after that, recalling value of cotangent of pi over three, you can get the answer for that A. Second method, you can use that European method. It will be a little bit slightly shorter, but also we need to ask ourselves certain questions. Pi minus pi over three, which is two pi over three, and this is 120 degrees actually. Is it from the second quadrant? Yes. Yeah. In the second quadrant, cotangent is positive or negative? Negative. Negative. In parentheses, that pi, is it a vertical quadrantal or horizontal quadrantal? Horizontal. The horizontal, should I keep same cotangent or I need to switch to tangent? Keep same. You can keep, keep. it. So basically, com combining all this, because it's the second quadrant, it will be negative because of that pi here, it will be cotangent. So the answer will be negative cotangent pi over three. Which way would you like to use? First or the second? Up to you. Second is slightly shorter. Can I use second. the second? Second. Can I use the second way? Yes. Yeah. So again, it will be minus because it is in the second quadrant and it will be cotangent because the quadrantal angle here is horizontal. With verticals, we change the name. With horizontals, we keep. And the reference angle is pi over three. So, so but now, please tell me about cotangent of pi over three value. I already wrote it down. Do you need my help? guys yeah it is negative square root of three over three so
so that it is not my final answer because I found the value of A that my original problem, my original problem now should look as arctangent of A because I replaced interior piece by A. Instead of A, I can write right now what I got as a value of A. It is negative square root of three over three. I wrote that right, oops. I wrote it right here on the top. And now I am going to use that formula which I showed you in the box, talking about arctangent of negative numbers. So it will be minus arctangent of square root of three over three. I keep minus for the answer. So arctangent of square root of three means it should be from first quadrant angle or fourth. Definitely will be from the first because it is positive now square root of three over three. In the first quadrant only, pi over six has this tangent equal to square root of three over three. So which means I finally reached my answer for this problem. The answer is negative pi over six. I am done with this problem. You can see here in this problem, we are using different method because composition is slightly different. We here do not apply to both sides certain functions as a composition. We just simplify interior piece. We simplify interior piece and after that come back to the original problem because we can rewrite this like, let's say, arctangent A, we wrote it down because we found already A value. We replace that A by its value and continue simplification until we reach our final answer. probably will stop right now solving these problems because I definitely went an extra mile, not even extra one mile, extra many miles going over these examples because you need to know this material for calculus class. But I'm planning right now to show you some important formulas or the let's say chain of transformation connecting different inverse trigonometric functions. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. um, I would not probably write anymore that this is example seven or eight, maybe just simply to write the uh, important formulas, important formulas for inverse trigonometric functions. Because again, they are not in the textbook, unfortunately, in this particular one. Let me this time, because I all the time was using that inverse symbol for these functions, I will be using traditional because at different books and specifically for calculus level, extremely often they are using traditional symbols for these functions. So, Instead of a sine with negative one, I will be using arc sine x plus arc cosine x equals. This formula can be applied many times in calculus class. Arc sine x plus arc cosine x is equal to pi over two. This is like my gift to you if you are planning to take calculus classes. And it can be actually proved very easily. Um, I like to make it more visual as a process. This why, let's say, I'm going to prove. 
we have many different ways to prove, many, many different ways. What I'm going to do, I will at the beginning assume that let's say it is true. And I will work with this for with this equality to see if after certain legal steps I can come to the identity which is true all the time. In this case, my first assumption that from the beginning that was true will would be verified. If I cannot do that and I cannot come to the identity, I cannot prove it. Let's see what can be done here. First, you need to understand that we have many, many, many formulas which were already used in this class uh, for direct trigonometric functions like sine, cosine, or tangent, cotangent of double angle, or sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent of half angle, or sine of parenthesis alpha plus beta, or sine of alpha minus beta. You need to understand that we have all these type of formulas. I'm not saying same formulas. They definitely look different for inverse trigonometric functions. So I'm starting. I am going to move, let's say, R cosine to another side, changing its sign for negative. And now I am going to apply one of functions, arc sine, and we have here R cosine. For arc sine, inverse function sine for r cosine it is r cosine but they can apply only one of that let's say i'm applying sine to both sides as a composition so it will be sine applied to arc sine x equals sine parenthesis pi minus two minus arc cosine x And on the left, I have a composition of two inverse to each other functions because inside piece is arc sine x. It means I'm already assuming that this x is in the range of outside function. So the left side will be just x. Right side. Pi over 2 is an angle. R cosine x is another angle. Basically, the right side is sine of alpha minus beta. Sine of alpha minus beta, which is sine of alpha times cosine beta. I am not naive to ask you to help me because you definitely need to know that formula. It is in your textbooks and I mentioned all pages. This is the formula. In my case, alpha is pi over two and beta is r cosine x. So it will be sine of pi over two times cosine of arc cosine of x minus cosine of pi over two times sine of arc cosine of x. So again, I just applied that formula. Instead of alpha, I'm using pi over two. Instead of beta, I'm using arc cosine of x. And I'm going to simplify this right now. Did you write it down already? Yeah. Yeah. Okay x equals what is the value of sine of power two one after that we have cosine of r cosine of x it is x minus cosine of power two is zero zero times and what i have i am not even try to I can simplify definitely sine of r cosine, but because it is multiplied by zero, I don't mind what I have. Zero times that sine of r cosine of x is zero. One times x is x. So I'm getting 
x equals 2x. Is it true? Yes. Yeah. Which means I proved that formula. Yes, this formula is correct. And again, in integrals, in calculus classes, this formula which I just boxed is used a lot. And again, as I say, this is my gift to you. And I just right now will show another piece. If you do not have time, you can leave. It is not a mandatory material. Again, it is just extra information which can help you a lot in your calculus classes. And what do I say? I would like to write right now a chain and I'm starting with arc sine x. I do not have time to prove it. I can. If you like to visit me during office hours, you are welcome to do that. I definitely can prove it very easily. And again, look what we have as a relationship. Our cosine x can be replaced by our arc sine x can be replaced by our cosine x of square root of one minus x squared. Arc sine x can be replaced by arc cosecants. Do we know that cosecants is a reciprocal for sine? And look what kind of relationship we have. Arc sine x is equal to arc cosecants of one over x. Arc sine, uh, you can see I'm just talking about right now uh, what uh, at the beginning, well, I have arc sine of x equal to arc tangent of x over one minus, I am going to show this right now, arc sine of x equals arc cotangent of Just one second, please. I will show it to you right now. I wrote two formulas. Arc sine x is equal arc tangent of x over x over square root one minus x squared. But if you can look at the formula for arc could be for connecting arc sine and arc cotangent, it is like a reciprocal um, for, for arc tangent of the previous on the previous line. So, and I have already formulas connecting arc sine with arc cosine, arc sine with arc cosecant, arc sine with arc tangent, arc sine with arc cotangent. One is left. Arc sine x equals arc secant of one over one minus x squared. And this is the last one. You extremely, extremely rarely can find these formulas in their regular textbooks, but they definitely can help you a lot. These are definitely formulas provided in quite a challenging, advanced type of textbooks for AP classes, but they are very helpful. But that previous formula where arc sine x plus arc cosine x equal to pi over two is very often, you can see that application of that formula in regular textbooks. Was that information interesting for you? I will be not hurt if you say no, again, because it is something extra. It was, it was very helpful. Thank you. It is yeah. really extra, extra stuff. You, if you like, you can actually use them in my class. Oof. Now that's it about trigonometry. I will definitely on Monday tell you about the date for uh, our test for trigonometry. 
but on coming Monday, I will start brand new material, which you did not have before in previous classes. And it will be about polar coordinates. It is so-called application of trigonometry. I hope that everyone will participate in our Monday lecture. With your permission, can I finish our today's meeting? Yeah. Yes. yes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Stay well, have a nice, beautiful um, weekend. Don't forget about Wiley Plus because you can see new assignments there. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.